Welcome back, everybody, to the Vulcan Deck Masters Week 3, day number one. It's time for our next match. It's Kibler from uh, Brian Kibler Gaming. We can call him BMK for short. And then we have Toyta from Fade to Karma. That's going to be a pretty cool match because I haven't seen Toyta in a long time since some of the European tournaments. I know that he had his health issues in the past, but hopefully he's starting to really piece it together. And he has a new team to boot, so it's pretty exciting for him to start proving his name. Yeah, um, do you actually know where Fade to Karma comes from? Uh, do you ask me knowing it so that you can save me from looking too stupid, or is it actually like you don't know? <laughs> I don't know, because Frodan, you apparently know everything, right? You're like a walking right. encyclopedia for Hearthstone, right? Yes, and uh, I, I have in front of me, Amaz, a device <laughs> that has access to all of mankind's knowledge. Okay. And so, with that power, I choose to Google a Hearthstone team. <clears throat> um, there's a bunch of teams called Fate to Black, but not Fate to Karma. I don't even know what that actually even means, like, if you take the uh, literal translation of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a team that recently got announced just, you know, even as soon as yesterday. Uh, yeah. They have Toyta as the captain. He also helped uh, captain, like, Lucky Draw back when they had really good players like Life Coach on it. Um, they have Cypher, who we saw earlier today, able to take a series. Deathlore, who uh, people were seeing qualify for Gfinity and at the Origins Cup. They also have Hawkeye, who got really far into DreamHack. And then Vortex, who won the Assembly earlier this year. So, pretty solid... Okay. Good group of players if you know the scene very in depth, but I would say you have to be pretty hardcore. And they're looking to make that jump from like a you know, kind of like a mid tier, like decent team to be one of the most respected teams. And they have to start winning a lot and you know, being able to take down Brian Kibler, who's becoming more, more high profile in Hearthstone, is a good start. Yeah, definitely a pretty big challenge. And um, Okay, so basically it didn't answer my question, which is fine. Okay, uh, so here's another challenging question. What does the M stand for in BMK Gaming? So many uh, Martha. Really? Is that Kibler's like middle name, Martha? Yeah, but he doesn't really want people to know, so he just goes by Brian M. Kibler. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, good job, good job, Frodo. See, you do know everything. Yeah, and if I'm wrong, I'm sure he'll write a thousand word essay blog on his website to correct me. <laughs> okay. Um, so here, um, uh, is it Kibler that's playing? Oh no, it's Toy that's playing Zoo, yep. Uh, Kibler does like the Mech Shaman a lot, and we saw him use that in the uh, Archon League um, last week. And here, Toy they might actually get a, um, get a lucky juggle. You know, we might see that happen. Yeah, I mean, either way, it's not the, the worst thing in the world it's just a totem like you still have to oh oh he's just not gonna coin anything he wants to he values the curve a little bit too much or maybe he just wants to coin the implosion next turn like, that's a really strong play yeah uh, it keeps his options open if, if assuming this knife juggler lives yeah actually I, I do like that because it's really difficult for mech shamans to aoe the board because they don't have any aoe's at all so uh, doing that is actually going to be pretty good actually baits out the nerf shock on the three one as well, so this egg uh, might come in handy. So egg and squire, the wolf is gonna buff them both. If Kibler plays a minion, you can even use one of your implosions, and the wolf gets even bigger. So uh, I actually like this one. Yeah, it's also worth pointing out that part of the reason Mech Shaman, um, you know, like it didn't fully take over the meta game at one point. It was just always in contention to be one of the big threatening decks. Was well, because of things like Zoo, because it can't just keep up with the pace of the minions being put out there. Not to mention that Kibler also drew pretty awkwardly. He drew out of his removal. He hasn't drawn his early game curve. Where's the Mech Warpers? Where's the Anoyatrons and the Cogmasters to really flood the board early on? He didn't get any of those. Yeah, but the thing is that you are going to draw awkwardly in Mech Shaman uh, more often than the other decks, right? You all not only have like high curve cards, you also have the burn cards like Lava Burst and um, Crackle, right? So you actually have a lot of deck cards. And that is why, uh, in my opinion, that uh, Mech Shaman is not seen uh, compared to play too much. It's because of the inconsistency of the early yeah. game. It's a good combination of things too. It just, ha it just feels like this is one of its worst matchups in my opinion. Um, and it's just very difficult to come back. Like, if this implosion rules a four, are you going to ever be able to clear the board again? I oh. doubt it. Yeah, Twitter's actually thinking about implosion in his own egg, but I don't think that's... Uh, yeah, I think killing the totem is good. And Kibler, mm, pretty happy about the two result there. 
Yeah, you know, you have Direwolf and Defender, like two ways to activate eggs and also be really good for trading. Yeah. Um, and Defender on a, on a board that has <clears throat> a lot of small minions is really annoying for this uh, Fell Reaver to get through, considering that you use both Urshocks already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So getting sense. through will be really problematic. Yeah, it makes sense to play the Defender here. Um, so you all, it also kind of makes sense to co use the coin and play a 2-drop because the coin is getting less and less valuable as the game goes on. Um, yeah. So I, I would pretty much say you want to play the Creeper just for more of a board presence, but I wouldn't mind to see a Wolf as well. Yeah, I would like the the creeper as well because it sets up for a better wolf and implosion the following turns on the, the turn after that um well, then because the then you have a bunch here, of yeah the good thing about the wolf here is that uh yeah it plays it exactly there and if the fair river attacks into the three two which it probably will um it actually shifts oh, yeah it's right? so, a good point too you go for the immediate cash and yeah. people it's ragnaros got burned um but that doesn't really matter yeah Ragnaros against Implosion and Haunted Creeper doesn't seem the, the best option in terms of your late game. I think you'd much rather draw Dr. Boom next turn on curve. That seems to be the best course of action. Alright, um, just going to clear off the wolf there, attack. And uh, Toyota is looking to clear, uh, burn even more cards. But Kibler just really needs like one or two more cards to kind of end the game, right? Look at this board, it's really, really big. And there are no any, um, there's no any attack buff minions that Toyota has right now. No abusives, no yeah. um, power of warmings even. And that's going to be I mean, a problem. This second implosion, if it rolls high, that is probably the game deciding swing here. Yeah. Because then the board is too commanding. Oh, that's not bad, I guess. It's better than that too. <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's okay. It's decisively average. Literally and also situationally, it's it's pretty average. Yeah. Um, not out of control just yet, because this fire elemental still has a lot of power, but still looking a little awkward. You know, we just saw Kibler burn Doctor Boom too, so he doesn't exactly have too many big answers after this Lotheb. But still, it's a really big problem to deal with. Um, now that Kibler can effectively remove some stuff on the board here. Well, remove some stuff as in like kill an egg. That sounds really, really bad. Well, he, he has to eventually do something. So he plays Lotheb and pass is one option, right? Yeah, Lotheb pass is probably the best, unfortunately. Like killing the egg, not only you have to kill the body that comes out afterwards, like it effectively gives it win for you, right? You basically, you basically make it harder on yourself. Yeah, but then you deny a trade from like power overwhelming too. Like I I'm not in love with it, but I can understand why. Cause if he has power overwhelming, if you play Lotheb, like the egg gets a lot of value from absorbing damage and trading and spawning the four four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's just going face. He's gonna make his opponent dictate the trades because it's pretty awkward for him. And he also spaces his mana out so that way he can get eight mana next turn to play everything in his hand. Yep, makes a lot of sense. I mean, <clears throat> only win condition for Mech Shaman is to kill your opponent and burn him down as fast as you yeah. can. So, dragging a minion to the face is usually the right move. Well, for Mech Shaman especially, because the deck is so razor thin with um, its damage potential, that a lot of times, whenever I lose games with it, it's always like, oh, I, I missed damage hitting the face. Like, I traded when... I mean, it's like reasonable to trade, but I probably should have hit face. And I've had so many games like that. I know it's pure anecdote. And I, I, Firebat would probably correct me with like how much it's that statistical relevance it has in terms of hitting things and trading. But like, you know, I've always found in my games whenever I played Mech Shaman that I don't hit the face enough. And that's why I'm, I'm just not good enough. Yeah, it just goes ahead and close the board anyways, right? So yeah. um, trading so there would have lost six damage effectively. Yeah. And now look at the, the power that things like flame tongue totem have the searing totem should not be underestimated Ooh, i don't like i don't like not tapping there because if you're not tapping there you're pretty much committing to never tapping and man your kibla has like four cards right now it's so powerful 
Double flame time is gonna clear off this um, low feb really, really easily. Oh wow, no, he's just gonna play the low feb here. Yeah, he wants his own low feb. Okay. Also develops the cogmaster, I guess. So, not bad. Like flame double flame zone is actually really strong, right? They buff each other up. Mm -hmm. um, but then this play is also very, very strong. So I can get behind this. Oh, well, that's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. I mean, you you toss away the the egg and then go for the doom guard. Like you play flame imp and doom guard, and then. I guess you can take out the flame tongue totem, right? With the doom guard instead. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of feel pretty silly right now for not playing the flame in the last turn, right? He, yeah. Uh, totally floated two mana um, and not mm -hmm. tap. So it's just like, sometimes, even against Mech Shaman, you just have to play stuff and still have to tap because otherwise you're not doing your zoo thing. You're not drawing the cards to kill your opponent soon enough. So here he could have just cleared the board with a flame imp if he played the last turn, right? But now he gets a little bit punished for not playing the flame imp. Kirbal, on the other hand, only has <coughs> one per turn, so he has to work with what he has. And wow! Oh, okay. Uh, is it time? Okay. How much is that if he rolls high? No, that's 14. Seven. No, no, no. Just kill off the Doom Guard, right? <laughs> oh, kill the Doom Guard. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, oh, no. maybe maybe uh, he flame tongues and then do, crackles the face. Oh, but you can win right now. If crackle. the crackle hits, you can win right now. Are you oh. sure you guarantee win right now, though? Okay, uh, yeah, okay, maybe this is better. <laughs> this, is pop this is definitely the better play, but the yeah. cool is the crackle face. Because uh -huh. then he draws like Doomhammer next turn or Power Maze. Well, I, I actually don't really mind what Kibler draws next turn. The thing of this play is so good is that the Doomhammer can't kill the Lothar, right? Yeah, that's true. It's really awkward. Unless you want to suicide it. Uh -huh. I mean, Which, you're always allowed to kill it. Just it feels like not the best trade. Right. Uh, so I actually like that. Oh, Kibble is playing pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, and it's one of those things, too, where, like, Kibble even admits that play execution is not as strong suit. It's more like, you know, deck building, creative so thinking. Um, and so it's one of those things where you get to see him play when he's on fire and it's like wow then that's really scary and now toy is <laughs> like well i thought this game was pretty winnable but now it looks like i gotta trade my doom guard yeah so. i mean i guess the winning play is to kill the flame tongue because you have power warming next turn but yeah you have to dodge a top deck and no that no is, you can't nope didn't dodge it yeah. sorry Should've. gotta roll the totem for victory no, no, you gotta roll the yes. totem for the searing totem, and then put that searing totem in your mouth and swim. It's a big reason. Whoa. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so that wraps up the first game. Killer's up <laughs> decisively 1 0. It's the best of three, so it's important to land that first game. Um, I mean, people can always make this argument that, like, oh, yeah, of course, winning is always good. But in best of five, losing the first game in Conquest is still rather flexible because you have a lot of opportunities to come back, but in best of three, it feels very uncomfortable in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a good position to be in after you lose the first game. It's uh, very, very tough. So, um, pressure's on Torde to actually win a game, and um, seems like he's actually gonna change his deck, huh? I think so. Um, okay. I guess it's fine. You have to win with both anyways. No, Mech Mage. Oh, Mech Mage. Oh, okay, what? then that's really good. It gets okay. Druid it nonetheless. All right. <laughs> okay. That works. Oh, yeah. Um, I and, mean, mm. Yeah, you expect the mages are like Temple Mages or Freeze Mages now. Um, and then suddenly Mech Mage uh, makes a appearance again. And it's going to be really, really strong against this Druid. Although, Kibler does have the wild growth plus keeper opening. That's pretty strong. Yeah, and uh, the second wild growth is a little bit awkward, right? Yeah, it's a bit overkill, so it's gonna be a dead card. But, uh, man, this opening from Torde is definitely gonna keep the keeper. Uh, gonna beat the keeper, I mean. Uh, silence is obviously the better choice. If you kill this, your opponent gets a 2 4. Uh, so you're effectively giving it plus 2 health, which is probably not that good. Yeah, not to mention that you have the opportunity to give it, like, 
give the secret drawn out of the deck. So if he draws it next turn, it becomes still a problem to deal with later, but it's you know less it's more awkward for your opponent because he has to spend the mana to do so. Yeah, sure, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um here, uh Kibler can play either five drop or either oh three different options. But the drill to claw taunt mode is gonna get punished by fireball. Yeah. And unfortunately, it seems like the, the choice bug there is going to require us to log out of Kibler and, and log back into him. Yeah. The Fireball. Drip. Yeah. Hmm. Fireball's he, pretty good. Does he want to kill the Keeper at all or just push face? Uh, you can, we can kill the Keeper. I mean, you don't want to get punished by swipe too much. So, sure. Do that. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well. Huh. This is really awkward. I mean, one on the other hand, you can like kind of make a board that's a bit better. So like Shredder or Lotheb uh, makes a board that you can kind of contest the minions, right? But if Kibler does that, Torde is going to go face. Now, if he plays Azric, he's going to get a free kill off, off the Tinker Town, right? And then he's kind of stuck in the same position. So um, both of these choices are pretty bad. He just has to pick the one that's a bit better than the other. I think I'm liking the opportunity to drop Pilot Shredder and Wild Growth here. Because next turn you can shade and loathe that, which is protecting a little bit of your board. And then you have nine mana the next turn. So you have like a few opportunities to draw a swipe, which can help recover the board with the Azure Drake on nine mana. Okay. Um, but that's that's kind of like ideal if you think your opponent can't rush you down. Not to mention the Pilot Shredder is also really sticky. Because Hero Power doesn't even do anything this turn. It's like, oh, I put him down to one. <laughs> uh, the the Noyotron down to one. So if your opponent picks up trades, maybe the Pyrefighter can stick, and then Lotheb and Shade can shut down the spells to prevent things like Spare Parts or Frostbolt Fireball to really control the board. Yeah, but even then, it's just kind of like the least bad of the worst choices. Now the Toy is just going to play the Shredder, um, going to stop the uh, Cable of Shredder from attacking at all, and it's going to push for 7 damage, and next turn he has 11. And that's just way too much damage, right? Yeah, it really is. Like, this... Lotheb Shade. Well, that was the original plan. Now he might just Azure Drake, pick up yeah. Wrath. But you can't even Lotheb doesn't even stop much, to be honest. It doesn't stop damage. <laughs> exactly. Like your opponent can always go face, and that's the problem with like Druid, right? Uh, when you play a minion, they, they can just go face and ignore it, and just you know let you, let you deal with the creatures. Oh man. Well, that's lethal if it hits the face four times. <laughs> okay. Or or even three. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 let's do that then. Oh, sure. three times is fine too, right? Yeah, three is fine too. That's pretty good chances. What to do? Hmm. You know, now that I think about it, with Toyota bringing Zoo and Mech Mage, that is a pop opportunity to reverse two kill here on Kimbler. So it's not the worst uh, situation, even though he lost one game. Yeah, sure. But Zoo against Druid is also uh, going to be quite troubling for Kimbler as well. Yeah, exactly. I think um, to Toyota losing the first game wasn't that big of a deal considering how well he's able to target Druid. Yeah. So here you go. Uh, no. Not quite. So one damage off Lethal here. I was also thinking about um, what if he popped Pilot Shredder and then like something absurd came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do like that. Like explosive winning, sheep? Yeah, yeah. If you're winning, never pop your own Shredder. I mean, never pop your opponent's shredder. Oh, never pop any shredders, okay? That's the there. Uh, bad things can happen. Yeah, just shredder to the face. That seems better. Don't pop in. Swipe? Oh, okay. That was probably the exact sequence that Brian Cooper planned for. Uh -huh. And we even talked about the possibility, but it happened. Well, it okay, let's see. Happened. Well, let's see what he can do with, do with this, because even with the Eldritch Swipe, he still needs to sacrifice possibly both of his creatures to deal with the shredder, right? Well, I was thinking that uh, he swiped the Shredder and then see what comes out. But I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, this is this might be a bit better because like the Shredder might come out something like that. This is not relevant, right? So right. something like uh, one attack creature. Uh, not quite. So it's okay. dead. Oh, wow! Whirling Sabbatic is actually not bad. Like Savage Roar actually does like double damage now, and no spells from Toyota to actually end the game. And now Ooh. we see that it's actually Kibler pressuring Toyota. Yeah, uh, Kibler also has an Ancient Overlord to stabilize next turn, along with another Shade, so... Wow, how uh, tides have changed. Yeah, he doesn't... I don't think he has lethal, though, right? 
Oh wait, wait, hold on. How does he have lethal if he has a combo? Like I don't, I don't think it really matters. Either way, um, Mech Warper plus Spider Tank plus the Tink t Tinker Town Technician get you that spare part and also fills the board so that your opponent kind of has to answer it. So I, I'm liking that play. It's pretty strong. Right. That's probably going to be what we're going to see here. It uses up all the mana. Um, we'll see what t spare part this is. A freeze or a stealth would be insanely good, but nope, not quite. And uh, yeah, spire tank is completely fine here. Oh, it would be. It would be lethal. If he had what, what do you mean? Uh, oh, Force Nature Savage or because the oh, wave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so 16 damage on the board, right? So then 16 plus 14 is 30. Yeah. What to do here, though? That's interesting. Like, Kibler knows that he's going to die a fireball no matter what. So hero pyring is not really super necessary. Um, you could play right. the Druid Claw plus the Shade and develop the board, and next turn has Ancient of Floor. That might be the best play. But Kibler needs to find a way to deal with the uh, Archmage that's going to come down next turn too. And that is really troublesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think he's also contemplating if there's a way to set up so maybe the next draw could be lethal if he gets Savage Roar. Right. I think the best play he can do if he knows his opponent's hand is to charge this through the ball and kill the 4-4. Yeah. But then he has no both hands and that's really difficult, right? I'm going to go with the heal instead. Mm -hmm. Set up shade. Not bad either. And of course, every time a druid chooses a uh, action, we'll have to refresh the. Yeah, we'll log out of Kibler in just a sec. Cogmaster not helpful at all. Oh, that's really bad. Um, also, interesting to note that if he goes for an Antonidas Rusty Horn play, he still right. won't have lethal next turn because his opponent can just hero power and go to eight health. And that dance will exist forever until Toyota picks up one more point of damage. That's true. So he. I so, but I mean, th but then you also have present the idea that you have to kill Antonidas. So. Well, you, you use can, your board basically, right? Or yeah, you can use the charge with the Druid or Claw, but Kibbola needs a little bit of help here, I would say, yes. And I guess there's no point in taunting the 4 4 if it just dies, so you might as well just taunt the Archmage, so, you know, give your opponent less options to, like, navigate around minions. Harrison not gonna be too good, and yeah, Kibbola is forced to hero power here, otherwise he's dead. So, um, here part plus the Drew the Claw in taunt mode might be the best. But once again, in taunt mode, you're not really that happy either, right? The fireball just clears it and you still have 4 0. So, yep, just goes ahead and kills the 4 4. And um, yeah, that's pressure pretty good. Now, is Harrison better here? Harrison might be better just because it challenges more damage. And you don't really need Taunt to prevent a Charger. Um, I don't think Mech Mages at all are running on Stable Portal. I remember they used to hybridize a little bit. They used to have that plus like a couple of more secrets elements of it. But that was just not a very good version of Mech Mage. Yeah. So I don't think you'd be worried about like Unstable Portal into some weird thing where you need to prevent against Charge. I don't think you ever play around Unstable Portal for then. I mean... What if it was 28 cards used in the deck and you know the last two cards are on Stable Portal? Yeah, but how can you play around that? Would you play that? around that? Okay, I guess you play around Jeff Wing and like, you know, stuff like that. No, but like, there's there's legitimate ways where charters and stuff would be. Okay, okay. Just ask Life Coach at ESO. Yeah, that's true. Savage Roar, not gonna do too much here, and I think that uh, Kibla needs to play the Taunt uh, to stay alive. But yeah, he needs to just... Mm. He oh, needs yeah, yeah, to no, stay no. alive, but like, what's also a problem is that he needs to kill off like the snow chugger, but it freezes the Harrison. No, 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 no. yeah, you need to kill the chugger. So, um, just do it. Go ahead and use the Harrison to kill off, and you might even, you might even want a savage sword just to kill off the Cog Master. Yeah, actually, that's that's not the worst thing. You still get the hero power, so you stay at eight health. That's the key, being able right. to play. Because you know the last card in the hand is Fireball. Yeah, of course. I mean, you saw it happen, so yeah. 
So being able to stay at 8 health is the key here. Oh, what if he charges the math sciences? No. Yeah, and he's gonna use the... Uh, is No! Oh, or yes! Yeah, I think he recognizes the damage is really high. Okay. Of course, Kibler's still dead to just a second piece of burn. Fireball, is... Frost Bolts. Oh, that is the worst draw possible! Is there no other mirror entities in the game, though? Or in the deck? Yeah, yeah there's no more. He already, oh, he already used one, right? Oh, no, no, he silenced it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah he silenced it. Okay, so that's not the worst draw <laughs> that's possible. Alright, so, um... <clears throat> are, you, are you willing to part away with the Fireball? No, right? Uh, no, right? No, no, you can't fight away with the fireball. Tough oh. call, though. Oh. It is tough. Oh. It does actually use it. Because okay. now you get that extra damage point, right? Shh. Now it's like fireball number two is lethal. Or actually fireball number one, right? Yeah, fireball number one. That fireball was not uh, It's that a fake fireball. Yeah, 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 it's an Archimage Antonine's fireball. Stolen fireball. Oh, that is so bad as well! <laughs> Oh man, they've been like bottom decking the other person because it's not a top deck, obviously. Yeah, that so was so bad. All right, what is this card? <laughs> so bad. Why are you being afraid these cards? Okay, um, I guess you play that. Um, you don't want to hit your map. Just, just attack the phase. You're so close to lethal. Frostball actually kills your opponent now, right? If you hit the phase. Oh, so you, you wouldn't ping Harrison? Do do. No. Do do. No, there's no point, right? Both of your creatures are two, two attack, so like, there's no point in pinging it. Yeah, fair enough. So now uh, it comes down to whether or not uh, Kibler can stabilize at all. <laughs> that that helps. Yep, that helps. That's actually really not really a good. minion. Oh, I actually, you know what? That's if it's counter spell, he gets to burn it. Yeah, I guess innovate is helpful because it does <laughs> burn the counter spell. <laughs> Why is this game still going on? Well, it's, it should be ending soon. Toyota has yeah. so many. No, no, that's not it, man. Kibler needs to draw like another inch of lore, and then he'll be fine. Well, there's uh, mirror entity out. So oh yeah, yeah, that's right. oh yeah, that's oh that's annoying then too. God damn it! Okay, never mind. I actually think one of his best draws is it's like a weak. You, if he has like zombie chow in the deck to like oh zombie chow would be insanely good. Yeah. Oh, but that's that's pretty. <laughs> so you want to survive at two HP and savage draw this down? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, this it. Harrison is no, no, no. Like if he savage draw now, oh, oh no, what is he doing? Oh, no. he just oh he just, just wants to big. get the combo. He just wants to get the combo. Oh, but he's dead because of uh, the whirling blade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you get <laughs> not playing around with whirling. Blade. We're not killing it. Oh my yeah. god. That's oh punishing. the oh man. Yeah. No. I think Kibler realized. <laughs> that. Yeah, he's like, okay, 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 you got it. Um, there's actually two spare parts that could have killed him. Oh, um, you could have gotten that or the reversing switch that would have flipped it to a three-two. Yeah. And given the extra damage. So Kibler realized there's actually a one third chance he overlooked this. And yeah, yeah, but that was, a, that was a definitely a misplay. Because even if he top decks Force of Nature or drew the claw next time, it would kill him, right? Like, mm -hmm. it would have been enough. So yeah. I think that was a misplay. Oh, man. Yeah. It's it's a little unfortunate. Um, but I think Kibler was also really afraid of, like, giving him the damage preemptively. And then. Um, and Wait. then. No, be, not being able to attack the following turn in case he drew like swipe because I think he, he would have put his opponent down to eight. Oh no no no! It wouldn't make sense. No no no! He was not. He can't attack anyways, right? The snow chug. If you don't kill a snow chug, a snow chug is gonna kill you, right? So you have to kill it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, yeah. it's gonna stay there. So yeah. Then I think the alternative have... was that uh, Kibler should have definitely killed off snow chugger because what happens if he had like the second goblin blast right, mage? Right. <laughs> he would have gotten completely obliterated here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it was it was Kibler kind of forgot about the spare prizing, and yeah, the interfit could have burned the counter spell. But here we go. Last game is gonna be. Uh, wow, what? There's a Neutron the Zoo list? And a big game hunter. Oh, so this is kind of more like a... 
mid range also, style. Yeah, team? it's mid range defensive zoo. Looks like it. Okay, I've never. Maybe seen he some. just really wanted a third void walker. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's kind of what Anoyatron is, if you think about it. It just kind of absorbs another hit in the early game. You can you can see it like that, but once again, you're not really putting a lot of pressure, right? I mean, if you're a handlock uh, versus like that board, you're not scared of all. Like, tap all you want and play a mountain giant. That's normal, right? Like remember back then, Zulus are very very aggressive with leopard gnomes and stuff like that. So then handlocks actually need to like not keep mountain giant. But now with like. All the void walkers and in-game bosses, they're not even pushing enough damage, so you have so you have so many time to develop your minions. Yeah, this is a free trade. Um in fact, would you just rather keep hold on to the keeper and then just hero power this turn so you get double five drop into Sylvanas? Yeah, yeah, you can even coin a Sylvanas into Forest if you want. So um yeah, definitely just hero power. And the, yeah. and the Divine Shield is always gonna be annoying, so you might as well just take it off now. Yeah, the thing about Divine Shield is when he gets buffs on it, so that way it double dips into damage or health or whatever you want to consider it. Mm -hmm. um, very problematic to deal with. Next like turn... The, yeah. Yeah, next turn is also the problem turn with like Defender of Argus too, or Dark Iron Dwarf if someone's still running it by any chance. Nah, nobody's running Dark Iron Dwarf. There's just way many, too many good cards. Uh, compared to like Dark and Dwarf, but Implosion, like the Chinese it. run it, you know, over in like I was watching one of the broadcasts um, oh. on um, the Chinese servers and, or the Chinese tournaments. They, they actually still run it. They do know that Void Caller is out there. Like, it's really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was one or two, but they did end up running it. So. Okay. Well, this well, is an awesome swipe opportunity if um, Kibler had it. If uh, yeah, if he gets it, that'll be awesome. If not, then a little bit troubling. Like the problem with like just coining a five drop here is like power overwhelming, and then you just get steamrolled out of control. You're back into square one. So maybe you just want to play something that has an effect on the board instead. So maybe keeper the Inoritron. Oh, well, keepers, the yeah. You have to if, if you're gonna keep her, you have to kill her. Right. Well, almost anything you do will uh, only remove one power off the board, so you might as well kill off the more annoying targets. So that way, if you draw swipe, it's more relevant in play. Makes sense. Let's see. Now, toy. Mm. If he actually recognizes the situation, right? Yeah, it, uh, also known as no swipe, uh, he would actually try and save these one ones as much as he can. So I wouldn't mind seeing him just uh, using the Enoritron to attack the keeper here, um, and then just preserving everybody everything at one health. Also gets a good flame imp to back it up. Yeah, Defender of Argus seems to be the best tempo play too, just for the most damage onto the board and start pressuring. You can squeeze in. Oh wait, you can uh, attack with yeah, so that the flame imp can get into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh wow! Oh, he's hedging against Swain. Okay, so this is playing around. Like, if you're playing against Life Coach, I actually really like this play because Life Coach would do stuff like that where he really? would he would hold on to swipe. Because you think like, okay, well, this is a swipe turn, and then he doesn't swipe, and then you're like, okay, he doesn't have it, and then he swipes you, and you're just like, wow, you know, curses. <laughs> so that's, that's what, exactly what happens every time. And life coach wins ten thousand dollars, and you don't get anything. Oh, okay. Well, I think um, it's a little bit too much thinking for uh, this game, at least. Uh, and now Sylvanas is actually going to get more value because there's less minions on the board. Force of Nature is looking like uh, it's going to come down next turn as well. So. Um, here, well, play at two eggs and go face. You don't really want to kill a Sylvanas for your opponent now, do you? No, it's you're basically playing AoE against yourself by have, by suiciding into Sylvanas because you have a few minions that do that take damage and die, and then it steals a minion. So make your opponent have the the trade opportunities there. Yeah, and here's the problem of BGish in uh in Zoo, right? It's a card that you can't play. And that sucks. Like the 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 thing with Zoo is that you have all the cards that are playable and are you know either very uh, cheap 
or they buff something and PGH doesn't do either and we see like it's kind of like not really that useful right now and I don't really mind the two damage going into the Argus here I mean why not you're re not really looking to erase your opponent this is not what the matchup is about yep you know Kilbert taking this test very seriously not taking his uh, not mm -hmm. really taking his time to clear it Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is kind of cool, I guess. What do you exactly do here? I guess you start off with a tap to see if you have better options. Yeah, I think you can definitely get with a tap here. There's no way you're in trouble by tapping life-wise. Okay. That's interesting too. Because now if you play abusive sergeant, and he and you trade into Sylvanas, and he steals your abusive sergeant. You pop your egg. Yeah, the but then the Sylvanas might steal the spider that comes up. So, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. You don't. You don't pop in Ruby, and you kill off the the defender of Argus. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's just, that's and then fun. you have. Oh, and uh, then you power your egg, and then the yeah. egg pops out. Okay, okay. I like that. That's the best play. See, Frodan, you should go just win BlizzCon this year. <laughs> One one pipe dream at a time. Oh, it just goes off face. Oh. Okay, fine too. Okay, just smoke it, I guess. Okay, sure. I like that too. Dead draw. Uh, no. All right. Well, taunt is gonna come down here. Mm -hmm. And man is gonna is gonna clear the taunter. So. Oh, but not even Doom Guard, right? Not even Doom Guard is lethal. Not Doom Guard is lethal. Actually, Doom Guard is. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, this so, is this is problematic now because Sylvanas is going to get a trade and control the state of the eggs, and he's going to have Ancient of Lore down. So this is this is the breaking point. If Toyota can't really do anything significant onto the board, really bad stuff's going to happen soon. Oh yeah, I like your play more. Now that I look at this. Good job, Rodan. Alright, so what oh 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 this is actually very interesting. You can power wall me your Argus and then try and juggle the Sylvanas, and if the Sylvanas steals the Argus, it dies. Alright. Oh that's right, because it lives with one HP on the, the tray with the Druid the Claw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you actually have one chance here to kind of to for your for the Sylvanas to effectively get silence. What if it steals your knife juggler? Oh then uh, you're pretty sad. Oh, what? Oh, he's actually gonna oh activate it. Oh, the eggs. He still gets a juggle here, but you know, he if the juggle he gets hits two juggles. <clears throat> two juggles here. If the juggle hits, it might be oh, problematic. The, the egg. Ooh, the four four. Oh wow. man. Was that the worst result? That is. Well, I, mm, that might be the worst result actually. <laughs> oh man, what a turnaround again. All right, Kibler getting blessed by the RNG gods here a little bit. Yeah, but you, on the back of your mind right now for Kibler is Doomguard, right? You're just thinking about Doomguard. I'm dead. Uh oh. Yeah, and the best way is to obviously just heal up here. There's yeah. no way. There's no other alternative if you want to play around that. Now, of course, we know that his opponent doesn't have the game-ending damage. Right. But he has been holding that card for a long time, and right. Zeus don't play BGH, <laughs> so. You know, you might not expect that. And oh my god, what a card! That is very insane, don't you think? He's just gonna kill off this Ancient of Lore with uh, with the Abusive oh. and the BGH. Oh, that's actually really creative. I like that. Yeah, I, like that that's play. Actually... I was thinking immediately of popping the egg through uh, trading it, but that's the best play by a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually the most insane card. Um,. Power of Woman can actually use the egg to snipe off the 4 1. And now it looks like Toyota has regained the board with the BGH. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, come on. I know, right? It's like, it's oh. like it's so gross now, man. I mean, that's that's it's what Kibler's so saying right now. Of course, Toyota, this is a really cool play. Oh, like, he just wants to bomb me a little bit. Oh, nice. <laughs> so gross. And then that's it. Well that's played. it. BGH yeah. won the game. There you go. So, look like what you said, man. The BGH able to grab the tempo was... I can see. Uh, it, you know, it came a little late, but better late than never. We have just sat here at this jungle camp. Really oh, crazy. man. Well, I guess uh, Druid is actually the weakest link. 
it's not good enough. Yeah. At least not this week. Uh, mm. Maybe we'll have another week in opportunity for, of course, uh, Kibler ends up falling to one and two, and uh, Toyota goes two and two. So Toyota stays off elimination just for one day. Uh, Kibler would have made it out of the group, but uh, now that he lost, he can still possibly make it through. He just has to make sure to clean up from this point on, too, because I believe he has one more match. Um, right. So that's it for today's uh, match with Kibler and Toyota. We have two more. We have Gar versus Trump coming up. Um, which was what people thought would be the finals of the HTC event that happened yesterday, but Gar ended up dropping to Nagori in the semis. And then we have Force and Versteel to end the day. So we're going to take a break. Once more, guys, when we come back, we're going to have Vulcan continue the deck matches. We want to give a big shout-out to Squarespace, by the way, who is also sponsoring this event. Um, go to squarespace.com slash deckmasters. You can get an opportunity to get your own professionally designed website uh you know there's not really too much coding required like i i can't really program my own site but if i want to do something like you know frodan.com which is probably not going to happen uh I, I hypothetically could go to this website and create it it's only eight bucks a month um and you get a free domain if you sign up for a year so check it out uh, start a free trial again squarespace.com slash deckmasters uh, we're gonna take a break when we come back we're gonna continue the fourth match of the day once again gar versus trump stay tuned <laughs> 